Today we're talking about a very serious issue in food policy. This is something that affects millions of people across the country every single day. Something that you and I have both faced on a regular basis. And we need an answer and I'm gonna find out today. The question is, how big is a banana? Whether you're buying bananas at a local shop and it's one banana is 27p, but how big is that banana? You might be making some banana bread and there's a recipe that says add two bananas, but well, like which one, which size? They're different. Or you might be tracking your calories. You're on a diet and you want to add one banana, but again, you're like, um, I don't know how big it is. So today we're going to answer that question. We're going to find out how big is a banana, but also we're going to find out does size matter? First up though, I did some research to find out if there was any data that existed out in the world to tell us how big a banana really is. There was rumors many, many years ago that the European Commission tried to make us eat like straight bananas or stop eating bendy bananas. However, that rumor was complete nonsense. You see, all fruit and veg, whether it's a banana or an apple or a carrot, has a grading system i.e. we rank different types of produce based on their size and appearance. This is why wonky veg is wonky because it's maybe too small, too big or misshapen. So it goes into that stream while then you've got like grade A perfect carrots go into the class one stream. It's a simple method we use to determine what's the highest value produce and what's the lowest value produce. Not saying it's right, but that's what we do. The European Commission simply had rules around what a banana can be, how straight or bendy it can be, and then they got rid of a lot of that in 2006 because they realized that it was contributing towards food waste anyway. Nowadays, the European Commission guidelines say that a banana can be between 14 and 27 centimeters along the convex face. So it's that area there, 14 to 27 centimeters. And that's basically it. If it's smaller than 14 centimeters, which is pretty small, then it's very small. Bigger than 27, I mean, 27's a foot. That's big, well, nearly a foot anyway. The US Department of Agriculture also lists how big a banana should be. And their data says that a small banana is 101 grams, medium banana is 118 grams, and a large banana is 136 grams. And they've got extra large, which is 152 grams, which is massive. In the UK, the Food Standards Agency also lists how big a banana should be. They say that a small banana is 80 grams. This is peeled weight, by the way. Medium banana is 100 grams, and a large banana is 120 grams. The UK's National Dietary Guidelines also says that a portion of fruit is 80 grams. So that ties in with the size of a small banana. So what we're looking for is bananas that are in a range of between 80 to 152 grams when peeled. So, but what is a banana? Now, the bananas we get in the UK, these ones, are called the Cavendish, that's the variety. And this was developed in around the 1950s because the previous variety that was most popular, the Gros Michel, was subject to Panama disease, which is like a fungus that affects the uh, banana trees, and it wiped out vast swathes of production. So we now have the Cavendish instead, and we get this one because it's quite a big banana. It has thick skin, not as in it can take insults easily, but as in it's quite good at protecting the fruit inside. It's easy to transport around the world as a result, and we can ripen them when we get home. Now, there are hundreds of varieties of bananas, and uh, we only basically get one more or less in the UK. Unfortunately, Panama disease, a new strain of it, is actually also affecting the Cavendish now, and it's starting to be wiped out in certain parts of the world. The solution to this is to embrace diversity. We need more bananas, more varieties of bananas being grown amongst each other. I mean, in Uganda, they've dealt with it because they do exactly that. They grow like 95 different varieties of banana in Uganda and they're managing Panama disease quite well. Anyway, let's make some banana bread. Cake is the best way to make people happy. So we're gonna do this in a very scientific way through the medium of banana bread. If you go onto Google and search banana bread recipe, one of the first things you'll find is this BBC good food recipe for banana bread. It's literally top of the search ranking on Google. Now the recipe is very specific, 140 grams of butter, 140 grams of caster sugar, two large eggs, not medium, but large, 140 grams of self-raising flour, one teaspoon of baking powder. So incredibly precise to this point. And then it just says two very ripe bananas. I mean, like how much banana 
is that? Is it like two of these bananas, two of these bananas? And will my banana bread be better if I use two of these versus two of these? Or will it not cook properly if I use two of these versus two of these? I mean, does it make any difference? Will it taste better? So I'm going to go out to all of the supermarkets. I'm going to buy big bananas and small bananas. Then I'm going to come back and I'm going to weigh them all and see how much the different sizes are. Then I'm going to leave them on the side to ripen for 10 days. Then we're going to come back. We're going to weigh them all again. And then we're going to make three different banana breads using large bananas, medium bananas and small bananas. So we're going to scientifically discover whether the size of your banana makes any difference to the quality of your banana bread. I genuinely think this might be the most important video I have made so far. So here are the results from the banana purchases. I went to 10 supermarkets. That's M&S, Waitrose, Sainsbury's, Lidl, Morrison's, Asda, Aldi, Co-op, Tesco and Iceland. Out of those 10 supermarkets, here are all the banana sizes. However, what you really want to know is what's the smallest and what's the largest. The smallest banana came from Iceland and it weighed 104 grams, including skin. So that's pretty damn tiny. The largest banana, on the other hand, came from M&S, and that was 238 grams, which, I mean, it's more than double the size of the Iceland one. So that's pretty damn huge. I then left the bananas on the side for 12 days. Unfortunately, at around day 10, the bananas from co-op went they got completely infested by fruit flies and went rotten. I literally had to chuck them out. They were leaking. It was horrid. So we lost co-op along the way. However, by day 12, the bananas were all very ripe and it was perfect to make some banana bread. Now, all of the bananas lost some weight. Between 14 and 28% of their weight disappeared over 12 days as they ripened. I, I, I guess that's water leaving. Anyway, they got smaller. Once I'd actually peeled them, we had a new smallest banana. The small banana from Aldi had actually lost more weight and became the smallest one. So once it was peeled, it was only 57 grams of banana flesh. Oh yeah, and the largest change too. The largest was little once it was peeled at 152 grams. On to making the banana bread. The largest banana was 152 grams peeled and the recipe says two bananas. So that means we're gonna use 304 grams for the largest banana bread. The smallest banana was 57 grams peeled. So we need two of them again. So that's 114 grams for the smallest banana bread. And then if we average all of those, it comes out an average peeled weight of 102 grams, which means that we'll also do one loaf of banana bread that is 204 grams of banana, which will be our middle of the road average banana weight. So time to make that and then we can do a bit of taste testing and see how it is. It's 24 hours since I baked the banana bread and I was going to film all of this like really properly tomorrow at my table all like perfect however this morning i did a three hour triathlon training session and i'm so hungry i'm gonna eat these whatever happens i'm gonna like break into them so let's just try some let's see what they're like and i can satisfy my desire for some sugar and carbohydrates so i know which one's which so this isn't a blind taste testing for me unfortunately however I'm gonna go and see if I can find some other people that we can test these on. So it's not all down to me. I'm not a crust man. I'm gonna I'm gonna use the crust as a moisture retaining device. So cut the crust off. So this is the small, slightly soggy at the bottom. You can see there. It looks like a nice piece of banana bread though. Then we have medium. Oh wow, this has a lot more banana in it. There's a lot more banana texturing going on in there. Much more soggy on the bottom as well. That's interesting. I wonder if this large one's gonna be super soggy. Oh my God. I think that might be too much banana. It's just like solid banana along the bottom. So this is interesting. What we have here, we have small banana, medium banana, large amount of banana. The banana's all sunk to the bottom. And on the one that's large, it is just a layer of banana along the bottom. So that's actually, that's not very good. I don't know if my baking seals are a bit useless as well. Let's try them. This one's got too much banana. It's, it's lost its cakiness because there's so much banana in there, because there's so much soggy, squishy banana at the bottom. It no longer feels like a cake. It's got a slightly strange texture. 
and it's a bit too much is just banana. When you eat a cake, you want to taste the sweetness and the butteriness and all those other things too. And with that, it's, it, it's lost that. The medium one has just the right balance. You know, more banana is not better. The one with the most banana is probably the worst out of those three. The other two have a nicer balance of all the different, all the different things that go into cake. That's an L. Not a loss, it's a lesson. Okay, so you've got three pieces of banana bread here. I want you to try a piece of each one and then let me know which one you think is your favorite. Okay, again for the middle one now and the end. Just a second. That one? Yeah, it has more ha banana. I think maybe you put more banana than two other breads, but it has higher banana content. So that is the one with the most banana in it? Mm. Then that's the one with the second most banana, and that's the one with the least banana. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> hey. So we have the final banana breads here. We've got largest amount of banana, medium amount of banana, smallest amount of banana. I've taste tested these with a few people. Uli did some taste testing here, and she actually came back. She said she preferred this one. However, she did concede they all actually taste nice at the same time. I also donated some to some of Uli's neighbors as well, and they just said, yeah, they taste really good. I'm gonna do another taste test here. I've already done a taste test, but I'm gonna check once more. It's had a few more days to mature. Let's just do a proper slice all the way across there. Boom, shakala. Small, it tastes like banana bread, tastes nice. Medium, tastes like banana bread, tastes nice. And large. Now, it's worth noting, I don't know if you can see that, that the large has quite a large density of banana at the bottom. I don't know if that's my cake baking skills, but you can just see that there's a lot more banana in it. It tastes nice as well. It doesn't actually matter very much. I've got to be honest, the large banana slice has more banana in it, okay? It tastes a little bit more banana-y. However, it does appear that the banana flavor is present in all of them. Like the one that's got the small amount of banana, it doesn't stop being banana bread. It's still banana bread. They all taste like banana bread. This one tastes a bit more banana-y. So in conclusion, what are the results? Well, to start with, when we bought the fresh bananas, the average banana weight when it was fresh from the supermarket was 167 grams. That's the average bang down the middle. So that's what an average banana size is. Now, obviously it varied a lot either side of that. Once it had ripened, which is 12 days of ripening. So in fact, longer than you would leave it if you were gonna just eat it, because they turn into almost like mush by that point, which is also when they're at their sweetest, which is why they're great for baking at that point. By that time, we were down to an average of 102 grams of banana flesh. So what can we determine from that? Well, we can understand that the average banana weighs 167 grams from a supermarket, and when peeled, I don't know what it is when it's peeled, but it's on my phone. So what I did was I went to the supermarket and bought some fresh bananas and I found one that weighed exactly 167 grams. I then peeled it and put it on the scales and it weighed 104 grams when it was peeled. So that means a fresh average size banana is 104 grams of banana flesh. Which means that as they ripen, the main thing that changes is the weight of the skin. And so the big question is, does size really matter? And well, no, not really. A banana still tastes like a banana, whether it's small, medium or large. If you are a size queen, then well, perhaps, or king, then perhaps maybe stick to your big ones. But if you're just making banana bread, don't get hung up. It's still gonna taste good anyway. It's cake, it tastes good. Whether it had, even if you took the bananas out of it, it would still taste good because it's cake. So don't get too hung up. As long as it's a banana, as long as it's ripe, that's the important thing.